Hello everybody and welcome to this webinar. I am Riccardo Tonini and today I will be your teacher. I'm really proud to be here live uh, online with you. And uh, uh, my topic of today is uh, shaping, of course, how to deal with the complex anatomies, but always remembering that we have to preserve the original path uh, that we want to, do, to maintain and maintain. So, who I am, first of all? I am a passionate endodontics, uh, I'm from Italy, and um, I have my uh, private activity in uh, Brescia, uh, it's a small city in the north of Italy. Uh, my dental office uh, is uh, uh, in Brescia, and uh, my private practice is 90% uh, uh, dedicated to, to endodontics. Of course, I have uh, a microscope because uh, it's something that uh, I, I consider uh, really, to really important to use uh, in our daily practice. And uh, um, endo is uh, my passion. Recently, I joined the group of uh, Stylite and Endodontics, uh, and I was uh, since the beginning with them. And we are really active uh, online. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, courses, uh, training, uh, uh, we develop products. Uh, so we are the largest community of endodontics on the social media. You can follow us, of course, on stylitandendodontics.org. You can follow us on popdentistry.org or on Facebook or Instagram. Stylite Endodontics is a big family and uh, is a family that is always open to new uh, partners uh, and uh, new endodontists inside the, uh, the family itself. So this is uh, where I work. Uh, as you see, I love to work uh, in my daily practice with a lot of lights and microscope. Microscope uh, is mandatory in endodontics and uh, is not, uh, we have not to consider it as an accessory, uh, but we have to consider it as uh, a device that can be really useful for our daily practice. In fact, uh, without microscope, uh, we cannot uh, check very well what is really small. And you will see in the videos that I will show you later uh, why I'm really convinced about microscope. Microscope and endodontics, of course, are together for treatments more, for difficult situations, for checking if we missed maybe something or if we have to repair or remove something that we created or we left inside the root canal system. Um, thanks to the microscope, of course, we cannot preserve and maintain more the anatomy. Uh, we can try maybe to open better uh, an access cavity in order to remove uh, the, uh, all the um, interferences that we can find uh, inside the root canal system. And the microscope, of course, is something that can be uh, helpful and can really push us to the success. Yes, the success, an endodontist want to reach the success. The success is not only the, the short-term success, but is a long-term success. And uh, if we want to be successful, of course, we have to do good root canal treatments and we have not to, have to remember, uh, to avoid the idea and the concept that we have also to restore the root canal system in a proper way. If we uh, do shaping, cleaning, filling, and we do it a uh, resto with the perfect seal, only in that case we will be able to uh, follow our clinical cases and uh, we can uh, say in some way that we are successful. All clinical cases must be followed. If not, if you don't uh, take any x-ray during uh, your uh, um, endo uh, life, the risk is only uh, that maybe you miss your experience, you miss references point and also uh, failures are important to understand better how to reach a, a predictable success in the future. So endo is not uh, just 
well shipped canals is not just uh, uh, I didn't bro uh, break any instrument is not just uh, hey, today I shaped a beautiful curvature and uh, tomorrow we will see um, if you want to be successful in the Olympics is a daily work uh, you have to change your mind you have to be open to new technology you have always to be updated and of course we have to adapt ourselves on what uh, we have to face in front of us and i mean like anatomies is of course something that is difficult to manage sometimes or sometimes it's impossible or sometimes can put us really in trouble so today together we will uh, try to understand what we can do uh, with our rotary files uh, how to use them in the proper way because everyone is able and can go from this point to this point everyone nowadays with the rotary files uh, is able to go from point a that is the access cavity to point B, that is uh, uh, the, uh, the apex. Um, but uh, nowadays, the most important trend and thing, in my opinion, is in which way you reach uh, this, uh, uh, the apex, in uh, which way you enlarge the Rucanan system. Why someone decide to uh, enlarge uh, the Rucanan system uh, more than maybe you? or less than you. So today we have to understand how to reach the apex in a proper way, in a predictable way, but always mm, remembering that uh, when we shape a root canal system, uh, we shape something that uh, um, we cannot control at all. So is uh, we cannot standardize perfectly the root canal system uh, because we can only touch uh, the almost 60-65% of uh, the anatomy with our rotary files and we can only miss the 35% of the anatomy and it means that inside this 35% of the anatomy uh, we can leave some bacteria, we can leave remnants, we can leave uh, um, a lot of debris and sometimes if we shape a lot we create a lot of debris and with the debris filled with uh, uh, bacteria we, cannot, uh, we can only fill the anatomy um, and we are not able to remove them from the root canal system. So, uh, in our life, is not just shaping, but of course, is a chemiomechanical action combined between rotary files and chemistry of irrigants. So it means that we cannot talk every time about only about cleaning or shaping or filling. Sometimes we have to uh, put in touch the, and combine the two uh, the, or three. Uh, parts of the root canal, the, uh, root canal treatment in order to explain better shaping in this case. So what is in my mind today is to try to explain you how to reach the apex with the rotary files without destroying the tooth. But of course remembering that we want to be successful in, uh, uh, for the future. Just uh, some clinical case and uh, just for sharing my experience, uh, here we have uh, a conventional retreatment, a, co a retreatment that it was uh, symptomatic. Of course, I was, uh, after my retreatment, I was not so happy about what I obtained in terms of shaping, obturation, because in any case, I put, uh, I had some uh, extrusion of sealer or maybe uh, gutta perca. But this path uh, are representing two things, in my opinion. That uh, uh, the, uh, the path is open, so there are no blockage at the apical, in the apical region. Uh, that all of the root canal system has been shaped in a proper way and filled, of course, with maybe too much sealer during the one Gukuta Perka technique. But if it's a, a problem or if you feel that this is a problem 
uh, sorry, endo is not uh, your daily practice if you are afraid from that. Because it's enough to follow and check uh, the root canal system during the uh, years in order to understand that uh, what we extruded is no more present. What we did and what we left is a proper shaping, 3D filling with the, uh, the success reached over the years. So even if I uh, took uh, an X-ray after five years, uh, I found a beautiful scenario. So a scenario that every one of us would like to find after five, 10, 15 years. Shaping can happen during the retreatment, as I told you, or during the first treatment. And in both cases, we have to try to preserve the original anatomy. So we cannot pretend uh, to try to, to talk about endo only when we have uh, to do treatment of a natural teeth. No, also during the retreatments, we have to try to preserve and maintain the original anatomy. And this is the secret in order to be successful or try to do something better than someone else that uh, did the first treatment. Like in this case, as you can see, a crown with the two metal post uh, and uh, a treatment that is absolutely incomplete. What I did was, okay, let me try to do my best. Distal canal, I was able to reach the apex, but without destroying it, without over enlarging it. I have, it's not necessary to overshape something, thinking that you are reducing the amount of bacteria. No, if you want to reduce the amount of bacteria, sorry, you have only to clean better the root canal system with irrigants. And in the mission roots, I was able to reach the apex only in one mission root. And in the other, I was not able. But here, we have not to destroy again the Rukanan system in order to reach uh, working left from both sides. Because sometimes, if the Rukanan system is confluent, or if you were able to remove properly the, the, uh, the amount uh, of bacteria, and if you, uh, um, uh, if you were able to, to fix the situation as it is, of course, uh, you can be successful in any case. So the minimum intervention was more than enough. This is the idea that I would like to share with you today. We have not to be aggressive uh, in treatment of our teeth. We have to try to uh, be conservative and we have to try to keep and maintain what the nature uh, prepared for us. And what about resto? Also here, we have not to pretend to place a crown every time after uh, uh, that uh, we shaped and retreated our Rukanal system. We have uh, to fix, seal, and fix the situation, and uh, if possible, restore in the most conservative way, but always conservative, but long term. So uh, overlay made uh, in, uh, um, uh, in composite is of course uh, a choice, a trend that we have uh, uh, to follow nowadays uh, because we can keep and maintain a lot of sound tissue. So preserving the anatomy means also preserving the crown, preserving uh, um, in a proper way what we want to leave. So uh, if we have to preserve uh, the, uh, the tooth, we have to think about the entire tooth not just the rucanal system. Because if we preserve the rucanal system, but we don't preserve the crown or we are aggressive there, we can have a failure and we can see that our teeth uh, can break and uh, our rucanal treatment is absolutely unuseful or uh, completely without any reason. The same story here, another example, just for giving you the idea of uh, the topic of today, a sound tooth with deep curvature and uh, a tooth that uh, I treated uh, due to a, a crack, a coronal crack. Uh, I shaped 
in the proper way uh, using uh, um, not so aggressive uh, rotary files and I was able to follow the anatomy, curvature, preserve the anatomy. I was able to do a 3D filling in a proper way and probably also cleaning because in during the years the situation is under control. But of course with the resto uh, made in composite. So the concept of preserving the anatomy is exactly this one. So starting from the canal, root canal system, starting from uh, the um, access cavity of course and uh, the root canal system shaping, filling, cleaning and be conservative with the 3D uh, resto. Uh, 3D because we have to be precise and we have to uh, seal three-dimensionally the root canal system. So in endo treatment, in endo treatment, when we shape a root canal system, we shape in this way. We are doing only a small part of an uh, entire root canal treatment. We are removing uh, uh, debris. This debris must be always in touch with uh, some irrigants in order to try to remove them from the root canal system. If not, we will fill the entire root canal system only and we are not able to do a proper uh, shaping with the debris removal and uh, what we uh, what the shaping represents is something that we have to do in our daily practice we can use many rotary files because on the market nowadays we can find a huge offer for rotary files probably too much and the risk is also to uh, get in confusion so that some clinician maybe can uh, can uh, yeah, can go in, uh, in confusion can do some mistake uh, exactly because uh, uh, they are using uh, uh, a rotary file system for example every tooth no the anatomy is a bit uh, complicated so it's not always the same the real right and good endodontist is the one that is able to select the uh, rotary file on the basis of the anatomy that uh, uh, he has to treat or to face or to shape uh, that day. So a proper diagnosis is important and also the first feeling that we have inside the root canal system with the rotary files is always important, but also with manual files, is always important for understanding what we have in front of us. Just to telling you uh, an experience, uh, when I do some courses, I have a lot of uh, clinicians that uh, they pretend to um, shape all the root canal system with a reciprocation file. An example with way one, they say, "Oh, I can. I'm able to shape everything with way one. Uh, why uh, should I have to change?" And always I have to reply him, uh, "This is not a good concept for endo. You are not a good uh, endodontist. You are not a modern endodontist. But you have a GP in that case because you pretend to shape the root canal system, every root canal system, with the same file. It means that some." of them will be overshaped, someone of them will be undershaped. And how can you shape a MB2 with a file that is so big for this anatomy? It means that you will destroy the anatomy. At the end, you will reach from A, so from orifice to the apex, you will reach in any case uh, um, the, uh, the, uh, the apex. But in which way? At what cost? At huge cost, because you destroyed the tooth. So the uh, clinician is really important, uh, in, uh, is a key uh, in this decision. So the clinician is more important than the rotary file itself. The clinician is the key for preserving more the anatomy and for writing down a good strategy. So the secret, you are the secret, <laughs> not the rotary files. You are the secret. If you want to be successful, you have to train only yourself. Not, and this is absolutely something that is not depending on the selective rotary files. So a clinician can work uh, for a long time. 
And usually when we say, okay, I have a difficult root canal treatment of a molar, let me keep two hours. During these two hours, the clinician uh, is expecting what? The more I work inside the root canal system, the more uh, I will be successful or probably I have the opportunity to be successful because I'm taking more time, dedicating more time for what I have to do. Unfortunately, the reality is that when we introduce the operator inside uh, the, the root canal treatment, the operator is efficient only at some point. After that he reached the edge, he can only uh, go down. It means that if we introduce uh, uh, 20, 30, 30 the instruments inside our root canal system because we have time and so we continuously shape or clean or so on, the risk is only to do some mistake and sometimes exactly at the end usually you break your file because maybe you chose something that is too big, too stiff for this root canal system because uh, until now you were uh, able to shape with the smallest file but considering that you have time, you want to be sure that uh, the outcome you ship more thinking that shipping more uh, is something that probably is something that can help you in uh, reaching the healing or the success in the long term no the only thing that you have that you can uh, have at the end is a beautiful uh, failure a beautiful failure with a, typically a broken file here the situation is typical because we have a broken file that is blocking the uh, the path for the for the, the apex so mistake made by the operator why because they pretended to uh, go uh, over a curvature with a key file that is too stiff of this curvature or probably in the here in front there is a blockage they did a, a, a ledge they pushed the key file pushing the key file in the ledge here at the curvature point they broke the file the same story here mb2 overshipped mb2 broken file the molar that we have to retreat a beautiful broken file here why because the operator uh, uh, he was not aware about the anatomy here my, maybe there is a confluence and in this confluence they broke the, the key file so the strategy is so important in order to avoid this situation and what about that another confluence a, a broken file that is impossible to remove in a conservative way and we can try only to bypass it or do surgery because the coronal seal is properly so here surgery is uh, almost mandatory and also during retreatment another story here another broken file always close to the confluence or another broken file because the operator he was not able to understand the difficulty of the anatomy and he pretended to reach the apex immediately maybe during shaping uh, with a file that it was not designed for these purposes so if we want to be conservative and if we want to pursue the anatomy we understood until now what that our strategy must be conservative since the beginning i mean diagnosis assess cavity preflaring glide path shaping cleaning obturation resto and during shipping the risk is if we force too much our instruments we can only obtain a beautiful failure we break the file and when we break the file it's always a game over if you are not so expert but when we break the two file a file rotary files how to avoid the breakage of course we have to to understand how to choose the rotary file on the basis of the anatomy and it will be what i want to share with you later but we have to remember uh, that there are the reason why we separate the instruments is uh, due to the cyclic fatigue so uh, we can provide to our files a lot of uh, energy but at some point the file is no more able to absorb this energy and can only fracture can fracture for two mechanisms flexural fatigue and torsional fatigue 
flexional fatigue is always when we have a curvature and we do continuous rotation and we know that we have compression and extension. This, uh, when we alternate that, we after some point, we will see that our file will break. And after we have torsional uh, failure, that absolutely is the most important uh, um, external factor that we have to consider. And it's based on us, because torsional means that the tip is blocked and instead the uh, coronal part of the file continuously rotate uh, until it breaks. So if we use files that are too soft or we push too much, the risk is to break. But also if we use files that are too stiff and we push, the situation is a sort of instability, the buckling effect, that can provide a lot of energy, not on the tip, but in the coronal part. And this uh, instability can only break or screwing off our file until it breaks. So the operator here can do the difference because we have curvature, we have difficult anatomies. The anatomy is not always the same. If inside a small root like that, we pretend to introduce a rotary file that is stiff, the only thing that we will do is a beautiful ledge here. After we are not able to uh, proceed further, we push more and we break the file. The same story here in the lower molar with the confluence. If we go deeper immediately in the wrong canal, so in the canal that maybe has two different uh, curvature because uh, we have a confluence, the risk is to break the file in the confluence. But also in a, in a root canal system with a lot of coronal interferences. If we don't uh, remove before the coronal interferences, the only risk is to shape coronally and overshape apically, because here we have a lot of instability due to the interferences that we didn't remove it. So the strategy of the operator is the key to the success. If we want to be successful, we have to train ourselves and we have to understand how to avoid broken files, so bad experience, because of course can happen, but uh, uh, after that uh, hit happened, we can only tell to us, okay, I understood why I broke the file. I was so stupid because I pretended too much from these files because I didn't consider properly the anatomy or every day we can work with uh, uh, in a different way. Sometimes we are in a hurry and sometimes the error can come and can occur to everyone. So everyone can fail. The best endodontist is the one who fail uh, less. And if we break a file, you remember, we have only three ways, leave, bypass, or retrieve. But let's talk, let's come back to shaping now. So um, we understood that we have to be conservative. We have to try to shape less, but shape less uh, sometimes is not always uh, uh, the, the key of the success because it's not under, an undershape uh, uh, that can provide us the success. It's more a full or a complete root canal treatment in a proper way and we have to remember always our goals. The goal for a root canal treatment or retreatment is of course remove vital and necrotic tissue from the main root canal system. We have always to create a sufficient space for irrigation and medication if we have to place. We have to remember that we have to preserve the integrity uh, of the apical anatomy. We have to avoid iatrogenic damage uh, to the, the canal system or root structure. I mean, mm -hmm. don't break roots or files. We have to uh, shape in order to uh, facilitate the cleaning and filling and uh, we have to shape in order to be of course to avoid the secondary uh, problems because maybe we are not we are not able to keep to manage in a proper way uh, the anatomy and remember we have to preserve 
the root dentin in order to keep the tooth in place as much as possible. No more. It seems difficult. No, it's not difficult. We have to use only our mind. A typical example, what about this retreatment? What about my shipping? Many of the operator can think, hey, here you have remove a gutta pair to remove the gutta pair of the previous treatment. Overshape at mean at least three times more than what it was shipped before, in order to be sure that you remove the infected dentin. And after you can do some medication, see the patient uh, three times and place the final obturation uh, and uh, uh, in this way you will be successful. No, my treatment was 25 minutes of root canal treatment, just shipping until I saw, uh, I obtained the perfect gouging, 3D filling in a same visit, but with the proper 3D cleaning uh, with the protocols that usually I, I use. At the end, we can see three months, six months, one year. This is the last uh, uh, x-ray that I did. I took at six years. So the, the less is more. The less is strategy sometimes, but the, not under shaping, not under feeling, but the right choice that we want to in order to be successful. So we want to reach a balance in endodontics and the balance that is from shaping, access cavity, root canal man keep maintaining, we have to do good diagnosis and so on. So we have to reach the balance in that way we'll be successful. A balance that can sometimes can really provide us a lot of satisfaction in terms of uh, 3D feeling uh, of uh, lateral anatomies. But of course, we know if you feel a lateral canal, probably you left other three or four lateral canals unfilled or you are not able to see with X-ray. And the first secret that we have to use and that we have to consider when we shape a root canal system in order to be successful is always to analyze properly the curvatures. So is a, a first step of the root canal system is a proper diagnosis. So we have uh, to, uh, to consider the curvature since the beginning and we have to, uh, to be careful because not all the anatomy is straight. Sometimes we have curvatures, sometimes we have double curvatures, and if we are not able to distinguish the two scenarios, the only thing that we can obtain is a beautiful failure. But what, how much we have to shape? Regarding the impact of the preparation technique of the canal transplantation, the, the following can be concluded. And just take a look here. Independently from the instrumentation technique, it, we have to remember that we need a straight access in order to avoid canal transportation. Straight access means remove the coronal interferences and in this way we uh, will not have curvatures, straight curvature or uh, apical zipping. It's important to create a glide path and we will discuss about glide path later because the glide path is the first enlargement of the root canal system can reduce the canal transportation. I mean, if you pretend to go inside the root canal system with the just one file, you will destroy the root canal system. Of course, you will be able to shape it, but at what cost? Everything will be straight. Everything will be full of debris. Everything will be infected. If we pretend until now to use stainless steel instruments without using rotary files, sorry, you are following the wrong lecture because the risk of a manual files is only to increase the level of failure, the level of uh, ledges, the level of broken files. If we, during retreatments, of course, or if you have to, uh, to proceed or shape deep curvatures, we can use the balance force technique. So watch winding technique 
in order to uh, approach difficult curvature and in order to decrease the risk of breakage of the file and canal transportation. And we have to remember always that the buckling effect and the operator must be considered. So the buckling effect is when the operator push too much, the tip is blocked and we have an instability inside the instrument coronally, not at the level of the tip, but coronally. And at that point, the instrument will break. What I did here is a consideration before shaping, so I considered to remove corona interferences. But honestly, you will see later that I was not able to manage properly this case because I didn't remove properly all the uh, corona interferences and I make this root canal system too much straight. The same story here, we have curvature, but we have to see into the beginning as well. We have to understand the anatomy of the root and that maybe we have a really long curvature. Because it's typical when we have this kind of conformation of the anatomy uh, that we can see the canal and after we lose the canal anatomy, the risk is only that there is a huge curvature, so a deep curvature like in this case, but the level of the curvature must be analyzed since the beginning. We can use, of course, any kind of file, heat treated or not. Of course, if we want to preserve more the anatomy, we can try to use modern files that are heat treated. And all this file can give us a longer cyclic fatigue, so we can avoid the fracture. And if we follow the literature, of course, the literature can give us some answer in terms of uh, uh, curvature location. And uh, at uh, following the curvature location, we can understand uh, how to avoid the breakage of the file. Because the curvature location is so important for every file, even if they are heat treated, even if they are stiff or not, or if they have uh, a cross-section different from uh, another one. So, in your opinion, which curvature is the most dangerous here? Of course, we, some one of you, can be af could be afraid from that when we see deep curvature in the avical region. But, we, in, honestly, the, the most difficult curvature is here, coronally. If we have a curvature coronally, immediately, after the orifice, here there we have a huge risk of breakage of file. Why? Because our files here, they are uh, big, bigger than here. So they are less flexible, even if they are heat treated. But of course, if we use a heat treated file, we can pretend to shape in a proper way, in a most conservative way, this anatomy. But every operator must be informed that if we have a coronal curvature, this is uh, something dangerous. So a red light must flash in your mind. Be careful. Don't use two uh, files with a huge taper because the only risk is to break the file or destroy the anatomy. And so when we have a single curvature that are coronally, of course, they are most dangerous than curvature that maybe are on in the apex. And if we have one or two curvature, we have to remember that our file in the second curvature will do a movement that we, it will be absolutely without any control because all all uh, about the, our file will be managed at the first level of the first curvature because here we can transfer instability at the second curvature and here, sometimes when we have instability here we can break the file at this level and or the resultant is only that we can increase the apical uh, diameter of the, of the root canal system too much. This is what instead we want to obtain a good and smooth shaping in all situations. Typical in one tooth we can say we can see three different curvatures: a smooth curvature at the middle of the root, a curvature at the apical region, a curvature at the coronal side with huge angle.
What is the most difficult? Of course, it's this one. Because this one, at this level, will transfer to the operator too much forces in pushing back the, hand, uh, the instrument and you will, will, the effect or the sensation will be that we have a pushing back force and what we, are, what we usually do, we push more. We push more because we are feeling is something is uh, push me back from the uh, from the coronal in the coronal side. So let me push down more. In this way, you will destroy the tooth and the rotary file. And we have to remember also that a good analysis of the curvature must be considered also not only by b dimensionally but three dimensionally. And this is a secret that is easy to uh, to see that when we lose from the X-ray, the image um, uh, of our canal, it means that we have a three-dimensional uh, curvature, and so we have to be careful at that level. Curvature must be preserved. All what we want to shape is like this, minimal invasive, and in a proper way, not all the root canal system must be shaped at the same uh, level, so bigger, bigger, smaller because I, I was able to understand what the anatomy uh, was telling me. So if the anatomy is not accepting more than a small file, it has no sense to increase the size because if we have a curvature, the risk is only to break it. And fortunately, nowadays we have heat treatments on our rotary files. I don't know if you know how a neat treatment is provided, but it's something easy to do. We have a conventional nickel titanium alloy that is heated and after freezed and in uh, after three, four cycles, we obtain rotary files that uh, has no memory shape anymore. So it means that we can pre-band them, even if they are big, they are softer and during rotation the feeling is that they don't want to try to go back to the original anatomy. I mean, if I introduce here a conventional rotary files, the risk is only that when I shape this part, I can only enlarge and make this curvature straight in an internal side and make the root canal system with a, a destroyed tooth or in some cases with uh, uh, some uh, uh, stripping or zipping. The same story here. What do you pretend from this canal? You can see from the anatomy that there is no path here. Really small canals and we can remove the coronal interferences as much as we can but we have to be careful here. I cannot pretend to introduce a file that is 2506 in this situation because here I will enlarge or make straight the curvature, I will destroy the tooth. No, here I have to reduce the coronal taper and in case I can only try to enlarge the apical size with a 04 taper or 03 taper but maybe not 20 or but if the canal is asking us more, we can enlarge to 25 or 30, but always keeping a small taper so the file will be flexible. Even if it's treated, remember the file here can force too much and can find the uh, taper uh, block, uh, and we can see the despiralization of, this, of, the, of the pitch. Uh, of the flutes and we can only observe a breakage of the file. The case of that I showed you before, this is a bigger, so the uh, palatal canal, MB1 and MB2, and distal canal. Two different curvatures managed with different files, of course, and where it was not possible to introduce a file, like in this case, I ship it as less as possible, uh, leaving the taper as, as small as possible. Here we have MB1 and MB2 that are on the X-ray on the same uh, uh, level, so we can, the appear is that 
um, can appear that this canal is overshaped. No, they are two canals. Also here, retreatments. If we have to do a retreatment, we have not to destroy the tooth. We can be conservative in any case. Take a look to the African region. The African region is crucial. The African region is really small sometimes. And if we remove a good aperca with a huge instrument at the beginning, at that point, we have to change our mind and say, okay, now I did what the operator before me did. Now I have to do better. I have to introduce a file that is smaller in order to preserve and maintain the anatomy in order to be successful over the years. Okay, we discussed about um, the, uh, the curvatures. We discussed a lot about uh, trying to preserve the anatomy. But what is uh, missing now is just one point. That we need a technique. If without a technique, we are not able to preserve and maintain the anatomy. Without a technique, even if we purchase the most expensive file, we will not be able to obtain what we want. So a step down technique, that is a cram down technique, of course. So it's a coronal enlargement and we move step by step to the apex. The last stage is apical shipping. Uh, can provide us a better working length. Why? Because if we take the working length since the beginning and we, if we leave interferences, the working length after that we ship the root canal system will be shorter. And so the risk is only to overshape the canal uh, over the apex, behind the apex. Uh, iatrogenic error. Something that after will be difficult to seal. And the cram down technique can provide us also no internal transportation. We can preserve more the anatomy. We can have a shaping that is more centered. We can have less debris. And we can provide more space for our irrigants. We can have better apical cleaning, of course, with less debris extrusion and less apical blockage. So, if we follow the cram down technique, we can only be more successful because we can have less problem. But the cram down technique, if we pretend to do it only manually, here we can see the difference between a, an operator with a lot of experience and an operator with less experience. If we do a shaping, just manually, we can only immediately create beautiful ledges. We can only blockage, we can break a file, we can do a game over since the beginning. If we introduce here a stiff file, here we create an enlargement, a ledge. No, uh, we have to use less, uh, less key file as possible and after go rotary. In my clinical practice, I don't use so big files and I don't do uh, any more nothing manually. I try to immediately go with the rotary files, always with the feeling that I'm doing something uh, in, a, uh, in a more uh, conservative way and in a more uh, predictable way. So all the stages of the preflaring, glide path and shipping can be done nowadays with the rotary files. Has no more sense to spend three hours in order to obtain uh, shaping with manual file. Remember the schematic part that I showed with you before, the operator and the strategy. After some point, the operator will do an error. All usually close to the end of the recurrent treatment. And if you spend a lot of time, of course, <laughs> you will do a beautiful error. You will break a file. My charts today for uh, key file are more around 0.8 and 0.10 because if we pretend to use 15, 15 is too stiff. So 15 key file is too stiff compared to 10 and 15 is a serial killer because it can provide only beautiful ledges. So the idea is, of course, we have to do a taste of the root canal system with the key file. We can see just in a passive way what the key file can give us. But after we have to establish the glide path. We have to establish a glide path that is made with the rotary files. 
So, what about glide path? Why is it so important uh, the shaping uh, and, and why is it so important establishing a glide path? Just think about uh, in the opposite way. The purpose of endodontic is, of course, to uh, be successful. In order to, achieve, to uh, reach the success, the root canal system must be successfully obturated. In order to be obturated, the root canal system must be successfully, three-dimensionally shaped and cleaned. In order to be cleaned and shaped, a glide path must be successfully prepared. So the glide path is the answer, it's the secret of every endodontist. If we want to be successful, if we want to preserve the anatomy, if we want to, be, to work in a predictable way, we have to work more on glide path. Glide path is from point A to point B when I'm able to introduce the first rotary file that in any case it will be small and thin. At that point I will print the my uh, the shape of the file, at that one point I was able to print this shape in, uh, in a predictable way and I was able to preserve as much more as possible the anatomy because uh, I did it in a rotary uh, motion, not in a manual uh, with a key file. And in order to distinguish the, uh, um, if our root canal treatment is difficult or not, um, uh, we can understand it only at the end when we printed the glide path. I mean, if we are able to do the glide path immediately, it will be uh, it's a simple case. But sometimes in order to do the glide path, we can take also two hours. So this is a complicated, complex case. So the secret for a good pre-flaring and glide path is around two different concepts of files. We introduce a key file in the beginning, but after that we introduce a key file that we felt the anatomy, how it is, we can remove the coronal interferences if they are present, and in a, typically in a molar and the major root, we can work just with the tip, just with a tip, because uh, even if it's heat treated is stiff and the tip is big, we can use this kind of files, but only with three millimeters of uh, uh, fluids inside the root canal system. After, we can start in introducing files that are designed for doing the glide path mechanically. No, has no more sense to do it manually. And we will use files with a small tip, a small diameter of the fluid, so a small diameter of uh, uh, the instrument, 0 0,2, 0 0,3x maximum, not so much. And uh, our intent is enlarge the tip size gradually from 15 to 20 in order, in difficult cases, in order to enlarge the Rucana system, in order to be able to introduce later files that probably has uh, have a bigger diameter and taper. So it's something that we have to do gradually. But the end of game, the end of challenge is here, at the first step of our root canal treatment. If we go with the proper strategy here, we will be able to preserve curvature, we will be able to preserve the anatomy, we will be successful at the long term, okay? and without um, the uh, risk of failures or without the risk of iatrogenic errors. Typically, we can, after that uh, we established the glide path here, typically we, uh, we understood that, I understood that this canal was uh, small and thin. Without pretending to do more, I enlarged gradually with 1502, 2002, and after, 2004, no more. So the, the intent of the glide path is absolutely to uh, reduce the risk of a tip lock, the risk of the uh, screwing effect, the risk of the coronal and the preflaring the coronal um, uh, interferences. And on the market, we have also so many files, but not all of them are good for 
uh, Glypath establishment and or for shipping because also the market can offer us so many files with different uh, cross sections and the cross section is also something that we have to know if you don't know your file you will not never be able to properly shape and keep and preserve the anatomy a typical example can come from here so we have a rectangular uh, uh, cross section is absolutely aggressive so with the, this cross section if we work coronally we will remove a lot of uh, some tissue instead with uh, a cross section that is maybe square or triangular we can be more conservative and uh, the the pitch the flutes everything must be considered and analyzed because of course a cross section with uh, with this design with two blades is really aggressive and in order to reduce the aggressivity of this color, this uh, uh, cross section we can of course to do any heat treatment but it has no sense to do any treatment maybe on cross sections that are not so uh, aggressive with the cutting efficacy as uh, uh, so we, there is always a balance but first of all we have to understand in our clinical practice what can can cut and what can't cut in this way we will not push or we we don't force too much rotary files in this way we will be able to present double curvature double curvature without destroying the tooth in this way we will be able to preserve the original anatomy without alterating anatomy at that point because here we have a curvature of course that can in some way can con, uh, can uh, move the shaping also of this curvature and the apical region if we pretend to go to the apex immediately here we will see a beautiful canal straight canal with zipping or stripping and uh, the, with the apical uh, breakage of the file or apical over shaping but what kind of uh, sequence we have to use which are the um, most uh, effective files nowadays on the market so can we say that maybe there is a, a sequence that can be useful for every day many companies every time they put on the market files with a lot of benefits uh, purposes and honestly i use so many files of different brands uh, nowadays uh, and today i want to introduce you uh, what i'm using from perfect endo uh, the mg3 kit and mg2 kit but kit because they are really nice as a concept kit because inside the kit we can find what we need for pre-flaring what we need from glide path and what we probably need for shaping or enlarging uh, canals we, but we're reducing the taper because this is the secret if we increase the size of the tip the idea is also why don't try to, re to reduce the uh, taper in this way I will be more conservative but let's talk about MG3. Of course, they are heat treated. MG3 kit contains uh, um, here we can see the files, the sequence of the files. We can find the one that is intended for pre flaring. And uh, we have to use it only if it's needed. So only if we have corona interference. It's not mandatory. We have to remember that the short. It's good also for the treatment, of course. The taper is 10 and the cross section is triangular. So it's a native cross section. So what we are expecting from this file is a good cutting efficacy, not a small or unuseful cutting efficacy. And after we move for the two files that are designed for the glide path, square cross section, heat treated not so much heat treated okay so they keep and maintain their uh, shape so they keep the cutting efficacy and they have a zero to taper but at this point we have not to enlarge coronally too much the canal we have to establish the glide path in any case we are doing the crown down of course 
the crown down, enlarging step by step the coronal part without pretending to reach immediately the apex, eh, but we will see the technique later. And after we start with the, the real shape, we can have the uh, 2004 with the triangular cross section and uh, usually I shape uh, canals, um, uh, 40% 40 of my canals are 20 nowadays. 2004, but not because I, uh, I want to undershape the Lucana system, but more because I want to ship the right. But if we have a bigger diameter on the tip, sometimes we can uh, combine a bigger uh, shaping of the tip uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the orifice uh, and uh, the apex with a shape that has a taper six so we have the same story for the other five but when we have a zero four we have a different cross section that is active but with the, in a less uh, diameter in a less taper sorry zero four this file g3 is able to shape of course a taper that is bigger than him but is extremely conservative so is a uh, really nice when we have to use it Sometimes when we have a palatal root that uh, has been already shipped 25 to 6, but we understand, okay, my root canal system is bigger, so the apex is bigger, let me shape on 35 without changing the taper. And after you will do the, uh, the, uh, the Gutta Perca cone trial with the 04 4 uh, cone, even if you have a 0 6 because uh, you will use the Wong Taperka technique. But clinically, what we have to do? Remember, we have coronal interferences here. This is a typical anatomy that we have to shape. So I introduce a key file number 10 just for filling without pushing. OK, I can reach only and just the coronal part of the regional system. Let me remove the interferences. I introduce the removed interferences, I clean after I introduce the first file for glide path. W until where? Until my working length that at the moment is blocked here because I introduce a key file until here. If we are working in a really difficult canals, we do a progressive uh, um, uh, augmentation of the coronal si uh, side with a 20.02 file. In this way, after we will be able to introduce again a key file and magically we can reach the working length. Now we can reach the working length, but only because we remove the coronal interferences. I don't want to see any more clinicians that pretend to reach the working length with the key files since the first steps. Even if you are working on a central line scissor, you have to work gradually because these files in rotary motion can remove also part tissue in a really active way. After that, we reduce, we, we reach the working length. We can establish the glide path with the two files that I explained to you before, 1502, 2002. And after here, from here for to a final shipping, it's an easy game because we have only to enlarge with the crown down technique what we did before. So 20.04 and if needed, so extra file are 25.06 or 35.04. In alternative, we can use also MG3, MG2 kit. MG2 kit is a kit that has a difference inside the, uh, the file designed for the glide path. Here we have a file that can combine the two files, is a more, with more taper, a bit more aggressive if we want, more efficient, so it depends on you. Uh, sometimes I prefer to use uh, separate, so 2502 in order to obtain what I need, but sometimes if I want to work in a faster way, of course, PX is the, uh, the file designed for glide path that can really 
shape immediately and establish a glide path since the beginning. And here we have the story. So this is the PX, same story. So coronally until I reach the working length, after working length, glide path with one file and we finish with our shipping. So here is up to you. My suggestion is uh, to purchase both and both systematic for glide path and keep them inside the, your dental office. Okay, let's do some trial on uh, plastic teeth. Here we have anatomies that absolutely are difficult. So I'm doing the unboxing. The unboxing is nice because you have always the guide inside the, the kit. This is a nice uh, story uh, because the guide is always useful. And we have uh, the, uh, remember you the crux sections. Uh, so all what is uh, indicated in right now. The speed also is important because you have to use them at, uh, at least at 350. And so this is the sequence, the conventional sequence. And you can see different um, uh, aspects coming from the file, different shapes. A molar, we are, design, we are working on this molar. Molar with a lot of coronal interferences here. Coronal interferences is the mesial canal. So how to deal with it? How to deal in a proper way? Coronally, with a, a brushing motion, with the first file, the smaller one, the starter, so I engage inside the Rucanal system. I remove gently some interferences coronally, but as you can see, I work only inside the two, three millimeters of the Rucanal system. Not more, no more. I have not to over uh, work in that uh, this uh, situation. And after I introduce the first part file for the glide path, okay? As you can see, can follow the anatomy Take a look, here I have a deep curvature in the apical region. So just thanks to these files, I'm able to enlarge gradually the Rucanal system. And after, I can use the first file for shipping from MG3 uh, kit, that is 2004. As you can see, it's a heat treated, but not so much. So I don't lose the cutting efficacy. And this is a secret of perfect endo files of MG3 files. Different heat treatments on the basis of the files that we have to use. So, shaping. Okay, we are working on uh, plastic, so uh, natural teeth, of course, uh, in terms of anatomy, but plastic, so we have more screwing uh, perfect. We have to work more on brushing motion, but when we reach the apex, we are able to shape and do the uh, the perfect shaping. The same story when we have a coronal interferences, coronal deep curvature. This is exactly the most difficult tooth. What we have to do? Remove coronally, first of all, interferences. Try to enlarge in the crown down technique the first part. In this way, all the files that we will introduce later inside the Rucanal system will find the path in an easier way. Like in this case, so we, we have to remove coronally after we introduce the file uh, for shaping and we can follow the anatomy and we can preserve the anatomy without alterating this double curvature. The risk is if you don't remove here the coronal interferences, you will have a huge enlargement here of the curvature and here of the curvature and a huge instability of the file in the apical region with an overshaping of the apical size. And this is exactly what we don't want. So with the MG3 kit, we can, of course, approach treatment and retreatments. The reason why is a kit that you can use for your daily practice. In terms of um, uh, durability of the file, of course, the starter one is uh, the most durable. What is uh, weak maybe can be the two files for the glide path. So uh, they are, of course, we can sterilize them. They are not single use, but we cannot use forever. A file like the 2004 is really durable, the same story for the 2506 and the same story for the 3504. So it's a nice design and the kit. And I'm, I'm working inside of this difficult anatomy in a really safe way. I feel the feeling is I'm safe, exactly what we need, nothing more than this safe. Shaping, 
okay and I want to preserve the anatomy because the risk is not is do zipping here if I introduce immediately a stiff rotary file I will have a beautiful zip but in case of enlarging if we want to enlarge a canal this is something that only to show you I use the 3504 in order to enlarge it but the same story is for a central ISIS or an example we use file okay also here we have to remove the coronal interferences we have to shape in a proper way but let's go in vivo first clinical case what we can see from the x-ray interferences we miss the canal here so it means that here i have a curvature and after probably i can find here what i did was okay let me rem let me do a first approach immediately in rotary motion this is px in rotary motion i can remove with the file for glide path i can remove the pulp and i can immediately print the coronal shape if the canals are really uh, sclerotic has no sense to introduce now the starter because if we introduce immediately the starter we can only block more the access no we have to work gradually before with this kind of files after i clean after i use a key file and of course i will reach here just here and just now i can use the starter because now i and after that i printed a first part of the way i can shape the coronal remove the coronal interferences and i can use now files for glide path here we are glide path don't push too much if not the buckling effect will be huge buckling is when you have we see instability here i'm removing i don't know nothing about the the working length at the moment i am i'm only using the files for printing a first shape inside the root canal system at the coronal middle part of the root now i can introduce a key file i have no more interferences i can take a better working length and after that i took the working length i can print the glide path until working length here we can see the working length is represented by rubber stop glide path at the working length this is 2002 used in this way brushing motion it has no cutting efficacy so it's really safe you have not only to push too much the 2004 able to shape and print the shape in a proper way okay shipping in the apical region uh, we will talk about gauging later the other canal always in, with the chemistry so irrigant inside okay shipping Okay. And we work in a proper cleaning. This is Iriflex, the new uh, tip designed for cleaning. Okay. We want to also clean the isthmus, so we will use ultrasounds. And after, you can do the down packing. Nothing difficult nothing impossible to do but always uh, thinking that we have to preserve the original anatomy in a proper way and in a predictable way it's not an easy case but also this one retreatment let me use immediately the starter the starter is a beautiful file for starting a retreatment you don't need to purchase dedicated files and after you can use in a crown down the removal of, of the gutta percha that is uh, 25 or 6 that is a, huge, a bit uh, stiff and uh, with a good cutting efficacy and after i take the working length so this is the demonstration that if we use a proper strategy the same kit can be used for different purposes of course i cannot use glide path files uh, 
for doing a retreatment because they don't cut nothing they can only break and they can do an, a iatrogenic error so now i took the working length now i'm removing gutta pecca coronary now i'm using the 2004 for shaping at the working length so i'm doing the crown down also during a retreatment in this way your kit will be successful in all situations the cutting efficacy is high the files here are stiff enough not so much stiff okay flexible heat treated but with the proper cutting efficacy use it in this way up and down okay up and down 25 or 6 take a look brushing when you reach the apex one two go too much here just for demo too much and you see that my flutes were full of debris so i shaped the shape of the canon the, the instrument i left that shape and after if you have an mb2 that is missed of course now you can use small files dedicated for that purposes like the files uh, for a glide path so 0 to 15 and you remove in this way the coronal interferences now with the starter also in md2 but you go inside with for one millimeter and after you reach the working length with the, the file for a glide path and you are we will be successful another clinical case just for demonstrating you the versatility of this kit starter this is the two with the vital path starter just for the first part of the coronal interference what i want to do i have to remove this triangle little b until here after i can sprint with the file for glide path the shape take a look to this curvature 90 degrees and you can imagine that there is something wrong since the diagnostic part of the root canal treatment because here you can see that i'm missing the canal here means that here we have a double curvature probably so shaping coronally because it's a difficult case after i will print the glide path until working length now i'm doing uh, pre-flaring and uh, i'm trying to uh, remove obstacles cleaning always don't remember if you don't clean you will fail okay cleaning after i can introduce a key file until working length and after that i reach the working length i can print the shape of my glide path files and i will choose later the final shaping that i'm able to reach final shaping on the basis of the difficulty of the root canal system on the basis uh, of uh, the uh, curvature and so on okay 2004 cleaning okay and now i can shape if needed more if it's needed or i can shape uh, uh, i can leave to 2004 my shaping until the end okay cleaning always inside my technique cleaning 3d filling this is a bioceramic sealer single cone technique okay applied with the technique that i personally invented and designed you can find more details on uh, pop dentistry another clinical case from endo to resto shape it 20 this is a, a 25 or 6 they are 20 or 4 and a build up with an overlay but the question is okay we understood that mg3 kit is something really uh, useful for all the clinical situations treatment and retreatment we can really satisfy our daily practice uh, for uh, the term 60 70 percent but when we have to stop when we have to move forward inside the ship more buchanan of course i'll pass with this beautiful sketch so what happened you reach the working land with the key file 
key file number 15 and you what we need is a taper uh, in the root canal preparation it means that the 35 key file will stay short if we go outside with the 25 it means i'm 30 and we understand that it's 35 we have to use a bigger file in order to enlarge and uh, print the shape of the instrument here but sometimes with uh, even if we are using nickel titanium files in the african region the risk is that uh, key files uh, are not able to uh, uh, obtain what we want so key files if we have here a curvature exactly before the orifice we can stop here we can be do beautiful ledges at the end of the rucana treatment it means that the risk is to fail also here what we have to follow is the visual gauging so when we extrude and we remove a rotary file we have only ways to check if we find uh, fluids that are empty or full of debris if they are empty it means that we didn't shape enough and the anatomy is asking us something more if instead they are full of debris we can stop and we can start with the conflict if they are empty the suggestion is okay I have to enlarge the apical diameter but let me see if I have to enlarge also the taper if not i will enlarge only and just the apical size without touching the taper so we have to be really conservative we have to shape less in order to be successful no sense to destroy some tip this wall gauging is this we want to see fluids full of debris okay last let me show you okay when we have confluences and we want to shape with the confluences uh, my suggestion is always to find the main the primary canal shape it until the end after you can do with a good aperca cone inside you can introduce another one the key file you can understand at that point how much you have to shape the canal because if you pretend to shape two canals that are confluent the risk is that the canal that has to do a double curvature in order to reach the apex here you can provide a lot of stress and here you can break five so you have to understand that uh, this canal is uh, the main and typically is uh, a mesolingual in a lower molar straight and the other one the major buckle will do one curvature here and has to do another curvature there at this point we have a risky situation and if we don't understand it we can overshape or we can do some error exactly what i did here confluence shaped the first canal mesial lingual after i introduced a good aperca cone i introduced the key file after i move the key file i remove the good aperca cone and i observe the good aperca cone okay my canal now the major buckle will be with a working length that is absolutely reduced so my new apex is here at the level of the confluence in this way there is no way for mistakes and of course you can use irrigants for understanding if canals are joined between them you can use push-pull technique my new uh, working length for this canal is here if I pretend to shape here, I will shape uh, double and I will overshape, I will enlarge the canal without any sense and I will break the file probably here. Confluences must be investigated in advance. If they are not confluent, instead they will, will shape separately. Shaping is important. We understood that MG3 is absolutely uh, important, but they must be associated also to a proper uh, root canal uh, cleaning with a proper protocol of a root canal cleaning. When we shape a root canal system, we cannot pretend uh, to do that. We, we shape and our intent is uh, to do that, to remove uh, all the debris until we shape. So I shape it here and instead I, remove, I was able to remove i have to remove all the cleaning uh, procedure so i need a protocol a protocol in order to shape and clean at the same time first of all i have to use flexible tips irrigants 
that must be used step by step. But let me show you my protocol of cleaning. If we shape the cannon, after while we are shaping, we use irrigants. But after that we shape it, we can clean and uh, clean for one minute, activate for 30 seconds and repeat, recapitulate for five times until we, in a single route, we reach the proper protocol of cleaning. The same story for a double and for a molar, 15 minutes. This is important only for showing you that shipping is not all for in endo life. That shipping is only just a part of the canal, root canal treatment. That shipping is important, but we need also a cleaning protocol. During shipping, and now, during shipping, sorry. Okay. During shipping, um, we can uh, um, obtain the, sh uh, the size of the canal that we pretend. During shaping, uh, we have to use irrigants, but the irrigants that are introduced while we are shaping are not useful for uh, obtaining a perfect uh, um, uh, disinfection. We have to dedicate time for also cleaning and after for uh, obturating this leucanal system. But the secret that you understood today is if we want to be successful as operator, we have to move step by step. We need, first of all, a technique, the crown down technique. We have to analyze the anatomy since the beginning, since the first step. We have to understand if we have a coronal curvature or if we have a curvature that are at the apical, uh, apical level. And at that point, we have to start with removal of coronal interferences, with shaping uh, and establishing the glide path that is exactly the secret for every endo uh, practitioner. And after that, we establish the glide path we can finally shape the Rucanal system until which instrument? Until the smallest possible, because we have not destroyed the anatomy, but we have to enlarge uh, uh, enough to introduce our irrigants and in order also to do a good 3D filming. After shaping, we need a cleaning protocol and we will decide at the end how to 3D film the Rucanal system. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this uh, lecture. Um, I know uh, we are online, we are on a webinar, uh, and I hope that you understood also um, that MG3 kit is uh, something useful for our daily practice, and you have only to try it for treatment and retreatment, but always using your mind. Thank you so much for your attention, and see you soon, probably, and maybe, and hopefully in vivo. Bye.